here at the uh, eMetrix Marketing Optimization Summit San Francisco and I am here with uh, Joe Megibo from uh, Expedia. He was the Vice President uh, Analytics. And first of all, I'd like to congratulate you for the award. That Thank you. You. you got yesterday from the WA. It was a great achievement from uh, Expedia. Thank you. I'm humbled and flattered. So, I was like, you, you've been to lots of eMetrics and I've heard you keynote and uh, several presentations. What did you see this time, which is, I don't know, a trend or something that is especially interesting? Yeah, I, I, I think I'm seeing two things, one positive, one, uh, one uh, as an opportunity. Um, it's, we, we've gone, there's some maturity to the industry that I see happening, which I think is, is uh, very positive. Uh, we've, we've gone from how do we get our leaders to, uh, to engage and to pay attention and to act on this data. And uh, I'm starting to hear more stories of, of action and you know, effective use. I think the tools have matured a lot. I think the organizations have matured a bit. And, and that's, that's fantastic. It's, it's quite hopeful. On the other hand, I, uh, I think the focus of web analytics is uh, beginning to be a little blindsided by, by other emerging activities going on. Um, for, for example, I, uh, I happen to run our mobile strategy at Expedia, and there are a whole class of analytics vendors in mobile. It's a very different uh, measurement paradigm. Um, yet many of the problems trying to be solved and, and many of the needs are the same. Um, so I, I think there's going to be some interesting convergence of, of some of these platforms, uh, at least in, in thought leadership, um, but a need to, to do a bit of expansion in our space as we start to, uh, to recognize that you know, web analytics isn't necessarily the, uh, the only analytics we should be looking at but people are starting to engage in, call it non-traditional web channels, such as apps, which by definition are not web. And how do you measure all, I mean, there are terabytes of data. I heard you speak uh, about the Expedia, the loads of, uh, of uh, data that you, you have available. How do you choose what to measure? Yeah, that's a... Uh, it's a constant challenge, and, and in many ways, uh, a lot of the data we collect is, is arguably with the hope that we never have to look at that data. There's a tension between having everything you could ever possibly need so that you can find that needle in a haystack and, and the break even of the, the cost of that storage and managing that infrastructure. Um, but there, there's a, I mean, we, we have continued to take a two part strategy. Um, one is a, is a little more reactive, which is create as, as many opportunities for feedback loops to identify things. And, and we have a lot of tools that allow us to drill down to just extremely granular levels. So whether it be a tea leaf like solution where we can go down to individual session or, or other transaction IDs that we can do in our systems. So feedback from customer. Um, I mean, it, it's interesting. While we may, we today get you know, 250 comments a day of, of, of feedback, which given the millions of visitors we have doesn't seem like a lot. But if you factor in that you know, there's, there's rules that say, you know, for every comment you get, there's probably a thousand more who didn't give you feedback. Mm -hmm. And if you have ways to actually mine the data to say, what does this one comment mean? And are there a thousand other people? And can I empirically prove that and do the econometrics around what that person is actually saying? It is like getting thousands and thousands more comments, and you can actually drive insights from, from very few pieces of data. And, and the other way is interesting ways to aggregate the data to tease out what you should look at. Um, you know, for example, we have thousands and thousands of event triggers we're looking at all the time, and uh, many of them are fairly smaller and consequential. But we've we've come up with ways to say, let me look at the biggest movers. It's it's very similar to what you might do in watching stocks on Wall Street. Um, what moved the most up or down as a percentage, uh, you know, versus baseline in absolute terms. And we have reports that can give us things worth investigating on a daily basis of, of anything that changed, even if they seem otherwise inconsequential or related to events we wouldn't otherwise be looking at. And. And how do you deal with uh, things that you cannot measure? Things like, I don't know, how if uh, the culture of the company is improving, the leadership? Yeah, I, I, I mean, there's certainly, uh, there are certainly dimensions that are very difficult to measure. I, mean, I, mean, I think fundamentally, so long as we're in a business of selling something and, and making money, the, there, there is always a measurement at the end of the day. Are we growing our business? Are we increasing transactions? Are we more profitable? Are our employees staying? What does our attrition rate look like? 
we do annual surveys. What's the what's the happiness levels, the engagement of our employees? I mean, there are always measurable metrics that may be proxies for other things, but I, I think fundamentally you have to come up with measurable KPIs that are around the success of your business and the things that you don't directly measure will still drive other things that you can. Okay, and just well, there are many CEOs and CMOs watching us and what is one advice that you give to them, people looking to create data-driven culture? Yeah, I, uh, I think I mean, I'm a fan of, of, of authors like Tom Davenport that, uh, that have put a big emphasis on you know, competing on analytics and, and driving analytics in the business. I, mean, I think all CEOs use data. Um, I mean, typically one of the most important people uh, a person a, a CEO works with is their CFO. And fundamentally, the CFO is just another source of analytics. I mean, they've, they've got data that is trusted, that is the lifeblood of the business. You know, what does our, our balance sheet look like? What is our cash situation? And CFOs do forecasting. I mean, they hire MBAs who produce phenomenal narratives that can explain what happened and where do we think things are going. And decisions are made on that data. You know, the key thing now that's happening with the internet is we've got other very, very valuable sources of data than just traditional financial transaction data. And those can be you know, very reliable leading indicators or, or more. And I think part of what we are trying to do is, is teach our leaders, teach our CEOs that there's, there's more data that they can be leveraging beyond the CFO. And, uh, You know, my focus has been to deeply partner with finance. Uh, many of us report to marketing organizations. There's often tension between marketing and finance, and, and useful tension. But I, I have sort of said finance should be our friends. Um, they've got the respect. They've got the data that is unquestionably trusted. And we need to become part of that. And, and in our organization now, we, we produce, cons you know, first, we vetted all the data of both sources to make sure that they, they match up, that our data and financial data are lockstep in sync. So there is no question of the, the validity or, uh, or usefulness of either set of data. And we do a lot of joint reporting. We put together a summary of the state of the business that is a combination of hard transactional financial data as well as the... Uh, the uh, The, the customer leading data that we have from, from more traditional web analytics. Interesting. And <clears throat> for people getting to the field, like people just starting, I don't know, uh, uh, with web analytics, what is one career tip that you would give them to progress? Yeah, I, I, I would say uh, um, I, I, I've talked a lot about committing yourself to to your job I mean we, we sit on gold mines of data and, and I find most uh, people new to this business who start to really see the possibilities uh, get very passionate very quickly about things that they uh, truly believe and you know I, I don't think we need to aim big I, I think find small wins find things that you can commit to and commit to those things I, I, I challenge people to put your job on the line bet on the things that you know to be true and the data screams as, as truth and And, uh, and prove those out and see them through. And that may mean doing more than just producing data. It may mean more than just producing a report. It means actually finding the people who can act on it, and it can be in very small ways, and see it through. Work with them, actually make change, go home at night and know that you made a difference in a small way. But then what we often don't do is sell the heck out of that. You know, make sure everyone understands what was that process you went through, how did you get from the data to an end result, and build on that. Hey, I can do that again. Let me have a little more, uh, more freedom. Let me work with more people. If you're a manager, let me get more people. And it's, it's an iterative cycle, and it's a virtuous cycle. And uh, I, I think it just means biting off something that you can deliver on and selling the heck out of it. Great. And let's uh, somewhat personal question. Uh, sure. What makes you whistle in your way back home? I, uh, I'm having a great time in my job. We, uh, I've, I've managed to put together a phenomenal team of people who, uh, who I learn from and who inspire me every day. Um, most importantly, we, we have built an analytics culture where we have a, a top-down leadership that, that supports what we're doing and, and supports us because we've delivered results that are, are worth supporting. So, you know, we have hit that virtuous cycle um, where we're continuing to evolve, continuing to innovate, and, and be on the front line of these things. And uh, I, uh, I just... 
can't imagine doing anything uh, that I would enjoy more. Great, thank you very much. Joe. Thank you.